round brushes are good for lots of things. Uh, good for detail, good for texture work, good for making lines. One of the things I suggest is if you have the room, put the paint a little ways out from the line you're trying to make and work towards the line. A mistake that can happen is if you take a fully loaded brush or a brush with lots of paint on it straight to the line, sometimes it'll go over the edge or be a little more out of your control. So try and work the paint to the edge. You can use uh, the brush by pulling it down the line, fanning it out a little, using the edge of the brush, and using the point to try and get into tighter areas. The round brush might be a little small for filling in large areas. There are brushes that can do that a little better, a little quicker, but a round brush is a good, good brush to have, nice standard brush to have in your art kit. A liner is a long skinny brush. Uh, sometimes long skinny brushes uh, might also be called riggers. Uh, they are really good for making long skinny lines. Uh, you can practice to do lettering with a long skinny brush like this. Uh, detail work, fine detail work can be done with a liner. Uh, they can get you a, a nice straight line. They are not great for filling in an area unless there is a particular texture you are looking for. If you want a very fine texture and lots of line work, then maybe you fill in an area with a line liner, but it's going to take a while. Long skinny brush makes for long time filling in an area. You might be able to do some of the work you'd do with a liner with a round brush. Uh, but if you have it, definitely practice with it. Uh, it can be a brush to your benefit. An angled brush is similar to a flat brush, which, which we will look at next. Uh, the difference between an angled and a flat is at the very end of the brush, an angled uh, brush's bristles are cut into an angle, uh, hence the name. It leaves you with uh, one side uh, with sort of a sharp point. Uh, it can make some different lines than a flat. Uh, the angled brush, depending on the size of the brush and the size of the area you're trying to cover, can be good for covering large areas. It can also be used, uh, similar to a flat brush, to get some lines, some straight lines, some clean lines, and the little angled point can help you get into some tighter areas. Uh, doesn't come with every you know, brush set, it is a little more specialized, uh, but it's a good brush to try out and, and practice with. Flat brush is definitely my favorite. I do think it's a very versatile brush and useful for lots of things. Depending on the size of your brush and the size of the area you're filling, it can be a very good brush for filling in spaces. You can get some nice lines with a flat brush. You work it, work the paint all the way up to the edge you're trying to cover and use the side of the brush. Try using the side of the brush or um, pulling that brush uh, sideways down the line is another way you can do it. But nice brush to have good for lots of different things. If given a choice, I often will pick up a flat brush to do a painting and not put it down because I just use it for everything. So fan brush, uh, definitely a specialized brush and often one that people go, what is that used for? Um, it's, it's a fun brush to use. Uh, it can give you lots of texture, um, it can cover large areas quickly. Uh, it's not necessarily a brush for getting nice straight lines uh, and filling in uh, a box evenly, um, but definitely a brush to try and practice with. Uh, one of the people who was really good at using a fan brush uh, was Bob Ross. Uh, check out Bob Ross if you want some good fan brush trees. Uh, and things like that. So it is a specialty brush, uh, but it can bring a lot of character to what you're painting. So it's a neat brush to try out and practice with. To rinse your brush out, you really only want a little bit of water in a cup or container. 
You want the water to be below the metal part of the brush, the ferrule. So when you rinse your brush off, that water won't come over the ferrule and get between the metal and the wood of the brush handle or the plastic, depending on what kind of brush you're using. Dry your brush off. Dry the handle off after you've gotten it wet so you won't have any water dripping down onto your painting. And then you want to store your brushes either uh, with the brush bristles down or flat. My container actually has a lip so I can add a little bulldog clip and hang my brush. You don't want to have it up the other way with the bristles up vertical like this the water can drip from the bristles down to the handle in between that metal ferrule and damage the glue that holds the bristles on so dry your brush flat or hanging bristles down you gotta soak up the arts like some cubes and some brine.